Hello, my little winglets, and welcome to the very first so plain Q and A video. Because there's nothing else to do just now than make a video about me. Our flights. A week ago, I asked you guys to submit questions about anything you wanted to know, and some of you took this quite literally. I was hoping for questions such as, "What's your favorite food? What's your favorite plane? What's your favorite color?" But no, some of you took it a bit further. And I thank you for that. So I hope this will make for an interesting video and will give you something to laugh about or laugh at during this time. 747 or A380 and why? Thank you, it's Schreiner. Oh, that's a difficult question. I really like the A380. It's such a smooth ride, a joy to fly on. I really like the plane, but the 747 is just that little bit more special, I would say. I've been lucky enough to have flown in the upper deck and also in the nose at the front, and it's just something else. And let's face it, the 747 is such a classic. So for nostalgia reasons alone, I would say the 747. Thanks, Murph. How do winglets work? And who invented the skip? So planes can fly because of lift and lift comes from having high pressure air under the wing and low pressure air over the wing um, but because of physics high pressure air wants to move into the low pressure area and by doing that across the wing um, on the side it creates these vortices or mini tornadoes like this which when you look at it it pushes down on the wing and that causes drag. No, not not that kind of drag. So the mini tornadoes, vortices cause drag by pushing the wing down. So by creating winglets at the end of the wing, it gives the high pressure air somewhere to move up like this. Huh? Ooh. And then it creates vortices up here, but they're a lot smaller than if there wasn't a winglet, which is like this. And what is this like this small ones which when you look at it push to the side rather than down and that's less drag and because there's less drag it means the plane uses less fuel and less fuel means lower costs and regarding your second question about who invented the skip that was a chap called edwin walker in 1922. What's the best meal you've ever had? I assume this question is airline related because it came from a band called Airline Food. If synth pop is your thing, I put a link in the description below. One of the best meals I've had was on Singapore Airlines last year flying from Singapore to Hong Kong in business class. I pre-booked the meal uh, online through Book to Cook. It was a morning flight, a 7.30 departure, and uh, I really wanted a curry, so I ordered this chicken curry, and it came with a big giant bowl of chicken curry with potatoes, and it came with rice, as well as um, bread rolls, sweet bread rolls, which must be a Singaporean thing. And it was the luscious thing ever. And it just reminds me that I still haven't made a trip report for that. So that's going on my to-do list, but I'll give you a quick preview now. This one's from Aberdeen Aviation. What inspired you to do YouTube and who's your favorite YouTuber? I actually started out making time-lapse videos. I was inspired by this video I saw. Someone flew on Condor on a 767 flying from South Africa back to Germany and I thought it was so cool. And on the back of that, I got myself my GoPro. That then turned into trip reports without me actually knowing that people were doing trip reports as such. So that's where we are now. And regarding your second part of the question, 
I don't actually have a favorite YouTuber. Don't tell anyone, but I don't watch YouTube that much because I'm old. But I admire others for different reasons. For example, Airline Spotter for his editing skills and music. Really enjoy watching his stuff. And the Travel Fox for his cheekiness and because he's Thai as well. What do you know, Thai? This question is from Jennifer. What advice would you give someone starting out on the aviation experiences? And you must try or don't. If you want to start blogging or vlogging, I would say, be yourself, find your angle, find your niche, find your own style, and produce content that you enjoy yourself. Because once you start chasing views, I think it stops being fun. Because you have to think about things like SEO and clickbait and stuff like that. Which is probably why I don't really get that many views. But for me, it's less about quantity, but more about quality. And you guys are quality. And you must try 747 Upper Deck if there are any left by the time this whole thing is over. And in terms of definitely not, I don't think there's anything that you shouldn't try. Just because I maybe didn't enjoy something doesn't mean that you wouldn't enjoy it because you would be probably seeing it from a different angle. And if there really is something that you don't enjoy on your travels, you can blog about it and moan about it. And people love that. So that would be good for getting views, moaning about stuff that you didn't like. Truth bomb, boom. This one's from Palm Air on Insta. Do you collect model planes? I do. They're all back there. Um, I collect uh, one to four hundred scales. Let's check them out. Next one's from Alan. Do you have a traveling companion? And if so, who are they? Thanks, Alan. Well, I usually travel with my husband, who has made peace by now with the fact that he will always get the middle seat. Innsbruck, Vienna, and Frankfurt. Rank them and describe them. Thank you, Heine. Number one, definitely Innsbruck for the views alone and because it's where I grew up. I remember being at school, uh, in the schoolyard, uh, during the lunch break, looking up and having all the planes going above me. Good times. Number two would be Vienna, because I like my schnitzel, and going to Vienna means that I will get a good schnitzel. Uh, which means in number three, I'm sorry, Frankfurt, you're number three. As much as I like Frankfurt, I really don't know why people hate Frankfurt so much. Actually, I do because the security is horrendous there. But other than that, oh yeah, and then there's all these long winding corridors. But other than that, it's a really nice airport. I really like Frankfurt. Oh, wait a minute. It's like just root people everywhere as well. And the lounge, the Lufthansa lounge with their bars across the windows is really bad for plain watching but other than that it's such a good airport i really like frankfurt this one's from my friend dr john when the airlines are back up and running where is the first place you want to fly to and why oh that's an easy one it will be thailand because i want to go and see my mommy and daddy and this is dr john again being cheeky the naughtiest thing you've done in the air oh john I know what you're digging for, but uh, I'll give you a naughty story, but not the kind of naughty you were thinking of. There was one time when I was maybe, I don't know, 10, 11 years old, and we were flying from Bangkok back to Vienna um, on EVA, and uh, family friends of ours were flying with us. Well, they were, they were on the same plane, and uh, their daughter, who's quite a bit older than me, um, you know, we were friends, but she was still a bit older than me, and um, every time she would go to the toilet, I would go and um, unlock it from the outside. You know, you can just lift the flap um, by the by the uh, lavatory door and just uh, stick your finger in and push it up, and um, that would open the door. And that's naughty. Thanks, Elliot. Love this question. How much magic is required to create lift? on an A380 with a full load of passengers? That's a really interesting question, and I'm glad that you're asking it, 
because a lot of people think that it's simple magic that can make an A380 actually take off. But there's more to it than that. Flying unicorn poop. An A380 needs flying unicorn poop, not just unicorn poop, has to be flying unicorn poop. So what you see at the airport, you know, these fuel trucks, they're not pumping kerosene into the A380, it's flying unicorn poop. Because kerosene will not make an A380 fly. But the poop itself won't do it either. In addition to it, you need fairy dust. At night, when the A380s are on the ground and sleeping, fairies appear and sprinkle the dust on the wings of the A380s. And that dust, together with the poop, create a magical reaction, which will make the A380 fully loaded take off from the ground. This one's from Scottish Traveller. What is your favourite trip on a train in the UK? Oh, and I think I missed your first question. Sorry. I have to confess, I actually haven't been on many trains in the UK, but if I had to choose one, I would say going up to Aberdeen for the views. Ha! Huh, look what I found! Here is your second question. Best looking aircraft and livery. Thanks, Scottish Traveller. Well, my favourite plane is the Dash 8, and the best looking Dash 8 was the Tyrolean Dash 8. I just loved the colours and the font, the Tyrolean font. It's a very simple but beautiful livery, I would say. And um, the accents on the wings were genius as well. So yeah, Tyrolean Airways Dash 8. What's the best man spreadable seat you have sat in? Kopkun Cap Mark? I would have to say the Logan Air Twin Otter because the seat was so narrow and tiny that it was just not possible to manspread at all and it made me laugh so much when I did it. Probably not the answer you're looking for but that's one that really made me laugh and made me smile. Thanks for your question Chris. What's your favourite thing about flying? How much do you like Lufthansa? Honestly, the food. Um, I don't know why, but just thinking back, I've always been fascinated about food on planes. Um, the fact that you're sitting in a metal tube, thousands and thousands of meters up there, and there's someone coming around with a tray of food. It's pretty magical. I do like them a lot. There is this emotional connection I've got with Lufthansa and I don't know why. It's probably because we go all the way back to when I was a little kid flying between Frankfurt and Bangkok all the time. Which is funny because the memories that have stuck in my mind are really bad memories. There's this one, there was this one time when I was about seven or nine, seven or nine, seven, eight, nine, I don't know, eight or nine and we are flying back from Bangkok and there were two other people that had the same seat number as me. They really cocked up um, the seat assignments. Fly was always overbooked. Back then they were so bad with overbooking their flights and making a total mess of it. And the flight attendant was such a cow. Looking back, probably the flight attendants were very stressed because uh, the ground staff made such a mess of it but at the time I was thinking the flight attendant is such a cow so mean and I was flying with my mom and they made me go and sit somewhere else and I started crying because I couldn't sit away from my mother because I was a child and my mom was shouting the flight attendant and they were shouting back I was big massive hoo-ha and those were the days when you still had smoking sections so the only place they could find for my mom and me to sit together was down the back in the smoking section and my mom hates smoke, she hates people smoking and it was just a horrible, horrible flight. <laughs> but I still really like them and I do not know why. This one's from my gorgeous friend Beth. How do you stay so young and beautiful? Oh Beth, I love you but I think it's time for you to get your eyes checked out again. Next one is from Adam. Thank you. 
What's your favorite airline that you have reviewed and why? My favorite airline would have to be Thai Airways. And no, I'm not biased at all. I love the cabin, the seats, the livery, the uniforms, and the food's always good. But most importantly of all, I really like the Royal Orchid service. The service in Thai Airways is always so warm and welcoming and very sincere, I would say. I know everyone always raves about Singapore Airlines and their service. And it's great. They, they tick all the boxes on Singapore Airlines, but it, the service feels like that. It's a tick box exercise. And sometimes I would say it comes across as a little bit cold and robotic, whereas Thai Airways is the opposite. It can be rough around the edges, a bit clunky, but there's warmth there, sincerity, and most importantly, I would say passion and love. So that's why I really like Thai Airways. How are you? That's such a cute question. Thank you, Vincent. I'm really well, thank you. Just a little bit sad that I'm grounded, but there's much bigger things, important things happening just now. So I'll just stay put and hope that I'll get out the other side safe and sound and hope you're well too. This one's from my high school friend Uffi. What's next? 808 or 797 and how will it look like? So Boeing was already working on a 797 which was going to fit in between a 737 and a 787 but let's be honest Boeing's got much bigger problems to worry about just now. Um, the max issue and still issues with a 787 and now the virus as well. So I don't think we'll see a 797 anytime soon. This one's from my dearest Helen. How did you perfect that photogenic pout? Easy, you just have to keep smacking your lips so they swell up. How do you become a globe trotter? Thank you, Kianos. To be honest, I don't really consider myself a globe trotter. In the past three years, I've really only been to the US. Central Europe and Thailand and that's because I've got family there and the only other place that I go to is Japan and that's because we really like Japan but other than that not really been anywhere so I wouldn't really consider myself a globetrotter. This one's from Frederick on Insta. Do you have now 16 to 9 eyes because of watching too much TV? You would think so wouldn't you but uh, due to my glasses it's more 4 to 3 and yes, you stay safe as well. Will you come visit me in Colombia after Corona? There is a direct flight from London. And this one's from my high school bestie Vale. Um, yes, I will come and see you in Colombia when all this is over. But uh, you should know me better. I'm definitely not going to take the direct flight. The next question is from Rory. How do you manage the environmental impact of your travel and YouTube channel? Ooh, that's a bit of a more serious question, so let's see. Personally, I don't buy into these schemes where you can offset your carbon footprint for each individual flight. I like to look at my carbon footprint in a more holistic way. There's no point paying for these schemes when you don't pay attention to your carbon footprint in the other aspects of your life. For example, I take public transport whenever I can or walk, both at home and more so when I'm on holiday, I pay attention to what I buy in the supermarket. For example, I tend to not buy a vegetable that's traveled halfway around the world because that adds to your carbon footprint as well. I'm also big into recycling, having grown up in Austria where recycling is very, very serious. And above all, my family actually has a tree farm in Thailand, so it doesn't make sense for me to pay someone to plant trees when we've got our own farm in Thailand. And last but not least, but still last, Dan Sander. When will I make another guest appearance in a trip report? Well Dan, that depends on how cheeky you are. Thank you very much to everyone who submitted a question. I hope I didn't forget anyone. If I did, please do let me know. Next week, I hope we'll be back to the regular trip report. I'm already thinking about which one to do. Until then, stay inside, stay safe, wash your hands and I'll see you next week. Bye!